are you unable to resist or is it that you don't want to resist? There's a huge difference between being unable to resist temptation and not wanting to resist it. As children of God, we have been given the power to resist the devil. Just like Jesus resisted the devil in the wilderness. He spoke the word, he spoke the word, he spoke the word. You better know that the enemy will even try to use the word to get you to sin as the devil tried to do with Jesus in the wilderness by saying, it is written, okay? But that's when your discernment kick in and you know who you're dealing with. You understand? And it gets down to get thee behind me, Satan. And you need to have the get thee behind me, Satan mentality when it comes to resisting temptation. Resisting is something you have to do on your end. And then by the power of the Holy Spirit, you're able to overcome. But if you're not trying to resist, you're putting yourself right in the midst of it, guys. Then you can't say, oh, I, I just can't. You always have a choice. You can choose if you want to take that phone call. You can choose if you want to send or respond to that text message. You can choose to continue to have doors open. You can choose to keep going to that gym where you know that man is going to be. That's your temptation. Okay, you can choose um, to engage in heated arguments where you end up cursing people out and hurting people. You can choose whether or not you're going to get yourself, you're going to imbibe in the gossip. If you're going to wet your beak on the gossip, you can choose a lot of things. You're gonna, you can choose if you're going to steal that, that, that pack of paper from work. Come on now, hiding people and stole some paper from work or a pen because it's just a pen. Stole a pack of batteries from work. It's sin, guys. You know, it just seems like it's no big deal because they got a lot of it. Then why you don't just openly steal it? Because <laughs> it's wrong. <laughs> but guys, we're tempted by what we want. That's why it's a temptation. But you should be looking at when you... When you're faced with sin, you just got to think, where's my level of loyalty to the Lord? Where's my loyalty at? Am I loyal to him? Or loyalty or loyal to myself? You know, James chapter 1 tells us very simply, it says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. If we love the Lord, then we are going to resist and we're going to endure temptation that means when it comes upon us we are strong enough to say no and even though it may be a weight and sometimes it's you're enduring it because you it's listen when when you're normally you know you're like a sassy person and someone come to you and saying something that you know in your head what you could say to them to really break them down <laughs> You're enduring temptation right there because you're like, okay, Lord, I know what I want to say. I've got the perfect response, okay? But, Lord, I, I choose to walk away from this. That's enduring temptation. You understand? When it, it, it's, it will be so easy to take that phone call and, and, and engage in that conversation. But, my brothers and sisters, you resist it. You endure it. That means you're stronger than it. That means no matter what's going on around you, you can keep your eyes focused on the Lord. So it says, blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let your love for the Lord be the reason why you overcome. Let him come to your mind and say, do I choose God or do I choose this person? Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has been conceived, it brings, it gives birth to sin and sin when it is full grown brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my, my beloved brethren. I'm reading the New King James Version. But what it says normally in the King James is that when sin has been conceived, it gives birth to 
um, when he's, no, it says a person is tempted when he's drawn away by his own lust. We can only be enticed and drawn away, drawn away by what we want. There's certain things that you know, hands down, it will not be a temptation to you. And there are things I know, hands down, is not going to be a temptation to me. Okay. And my brothers and sisters, we just have to get to that place to know that we have the ability to resist and to stand strong. Let your loyalty and your love for the Lord be what keeps you. You know, I've said in the past, guys, you can't, you're being so, you know, you're, <laughs> when you've been saved and brought out of sin, it tells you to stand fast in your liberty where you've been set free and do not be entangled again in the yoke of bondage. That's Galatians chapter five and one. God did not bring you out so you can be strong enough to get back in it, okay? God did not <laughs> save you so you can be strong enough to be around it. You know, for me, I know the things that would be temptation to me, right? But you know what keeps me? Number one, my love and my loyalty to the Lord now. I don't want to do anything that will disrupt and mess up my relationship with the Lord, right? So what does that mean? It means if there's anyone that I know that there's an attraction or there has been an attraction I close all of that off not because I feel like I'm just gonna fall off in it but I know that that has been an area that we have been okay this was someone I dated before and so now I'm in a partnership and I'm in a relationship a faithful and loyal relationship with the Lord so even though I know I'm not going to go fall off into bed with anybody because the Lord has brought that change within me, I still don't want to leave any doors open. There's no need for it. I'm done. I'm full. I'm satisfied with the Lord. And so guys, even if you're not there, let that be your aim. But how do you get there? By obedience to the Lord. This word of God will keep you. Prayer will keep you. And act and also practical measures. The things that tempt you, cut it off. The Lord says, if you're right, I offend you. Pluck it out and cast it away from you. Cast it away from you. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it away from you. God is not telling us to physically maim ourselves, but that's what you need to do. You need to be real about what your temptation is. Acknowledge and know within your mind this is what it is and remove it from you and shut the door. That's what casting it off it casting it off means. Some people they will delete somebody's number out of their phone, but then guess what? You're still emailing, you're still Skyping, they're still in your chats on Facebook, you're still meeting them for lunch. You know that this person at work is a temptation or whatever it may be, then stop sending emails to them you're at work. Stop meeting them for lunch. Stop going out with them after work. Stop going and getting more personal and telling the person more of your personal business and your life and doing things like that. Stop Netflixing and chilling on Fridays or whoever it is that you may be interested in. Go outside together in the daytime. Make your dates early. You see, a lot of times we're still doing things like the world. I've been guilty of it. Dating like the world. Nothing has changed. How is it that believers of God are still dating the same way? What do I mean by that? Well, you're going to catch a movie that starts about 7 in the evening. That movie's going to take you to about 9. Then after that, you want to go out to hang out to go eat. Okay? Or you may go out to eat in the evening. You go out to eat, meet for dinner about five or six, and then you want to catch a movie that's at nine. You watch a movie till 11. Then now you're just sitting in the car or walking each other to the door or whatever it may be, or going over to each other's house to watch movies on a Friday, spending the night, sleeping over. Guys, we've been doing things like the world. So what do you have to do? You be deliberate in your salvation. God has given me a gift of salvation. So I need to be responsible and appreciate that. So if you're dating someone and you guys are getting to know one another, then my brothers and sisters, don't make your day all late in the evening. We're going on into the night. Drive separate cars. That means, guys, you can go out somewhere, go to, you know, the museum. You could do something like that. Meet early in the afternoon and and he is bringing you home or not bringing you home. But you know what I'm saying? You're meeting and then you're going home by five, six o'clock in the evening. I know that sounds really strange. 
but we're daughters and we're sons of God. We can't be dating just like the world. So guys, you know what your temptations are. You know what those things are that caused you to sin. You have to be deliberate. You have a drinking problem, pour out all the alcohol. That's step one. Not give it away to your friend next door. Pour it down the sink. Throw those things away. Stop going into those environment and with those friends that, you know, women and whatever your temptation may be is present. Don't have those type of conversations. God did not save us so we can be stronger in temptation. Okay, what do I mean by that? We are going to be stronger, right? But some people get saved and, oh, I, I have the Lord now, so I can go over here into this compromising position because Jesus is with me and Jesus should be with him or her. No. You keep your feet away from sin. You don't put yourself back in those situations, guys. And it's not about being scary and being weak. You're set apart. So if we're set apart, guys... We can't be sitting there saying, oh, I just can't resist. No, you don't want to resist. In this world and in this walk, in this walk as a believer, in this dark world, you and I cannot do anything outside of the power of God. So the power of God and in order for him to manifest in you and bring that determination that you not defile yourself is by fellowship with him in prayer, taking time for the word of God, and taking those practical measures when the Lord tells it to you. Cut off them conversations and those situations and those individuals. Take a look at your thread. See who's in your call log. Who you still get, are in touch with. And clean that all out. And guys, you don't have to explain to anybody why, you're, why you have to go this route. Remember, E's mistake was having a conversation to begin with. Don't do it. Satan tried to have a conversation with Jesus in the wilderness, but he shut that down and he gave whatever it was. He gave the word. He gave the word. He gave the word. The whole time Satan is saying, if you're the son of God, if you're the son of God. And he just said, I am the son of God because nope, he just kept giving him the word. And he never acknowledged him. He never confirmed anything to the devil. So guys, cut those things off. Don't get yourself entangled again. Again, I pose a question. Is it that you cannot resist temptation or you do not want to? Now, there are some temptations, guys, and certain things, especially like drug addictions and things of that nature. It's a whole different ball game because certain people, especially if it's like heroin and things of that nature, withdrawals is deadly. It'll kill them. So there are other things that need to be involved. You got to go to rehab and all these different things. But in the meantime, you want to have a support system. And if you don't, you continue to pray to the Lord because he is going to, he can. And I have heard testimonies of when people's addiction to drug has been supernaturally removed but sometimes you do have to go through rehab. You got to go through that whole process, but the Lord is going to be with you through it. And so that's why if you've been saved and, and delivered from anything like that, you definitely don't want to get entangled again with it. Just because the Lord set you free from drug addiction, it does not mean now you go and hang out with people who smoke it. You see? You can go out and tell people about the goodness of the Lord, but they need to be on your territory. No drugs you know, at where you can, you, they are in your space. Just like when the sinners and the publicans went to Christ's house, meaning they were in his territory. He was in control. And so guys, we're here to tell people about Jesus Christ, but you know what? Temptation is only a temptation if you desire it. And there's nothing that the Holy Spirit cannot do. But you have to want to be delivered, guys. So I pose a question one more time. Is it because you cannot resist temptation or that you do not want to resist it? Think about it, guys. Repent and turn to the Lord wholeheartedly.